CT quality assurance program, okay, and you have to make a baseline, okay, for to check that your machine is uh, has the same specification you are request for purchasing order. Okay, and at installation, you have to do uh, CT radiation dosimetry, and CT radiation dosimetry is a part of commissioning, is a part of installation, and also is a part of annual quality control, okay? So CT radiation dosimetry is very important to check the output of your X-ray or your, uh, of your CT machine. And also uh, in uh, annual quality control, you will use CT radiation dosimetry to check constancy and the performance of the machine. If, the, if your machine is uh, still stable, it still give you the same output, uh, which will have, it still give the patient the same dose, uh, it's important to check uh, this uh, uh, periodically. So uh, also you can use CT radiation dosimetry to compare between different vendors like GE, Siemens, Canon, Philips, and Usoft. You have to, if you want to compare between different machines or the same machine with different detector configuration like GE 16 uh, row of detector or GE uh, 64 yeah. row detector. Okay. And also it's important to learn uh, CT radiation dosimetry to estimate the patient dose, not calculation, not we are, uh, we, we will learn today that uh, a calculation of patient dose for CT is not accurate, but we are estimating the patient dose. And also if you want to evaluate those optimization techniques like uh, dose modulations or KV modulation, milliampere modulation, or reconstruction algorithm, if you want to check the, uh, the, or if you want to evaluate the dose optimization technique, also you need to learn CT radiation dosimetry. Okay, so CT radiation dosimetry, patient dose determination is very hard. Why? Why patient dose determination in CT is very hard? Because first, an equal distribution that goes around the slice and along the patients, okay? Uh, as, as we see here, that the dose around the slice of patient, around this slice is not equal at all the point or longitudinal in Z direction and the X, Y direction. So the dose distribution is unequal. This is the first one, first, uh, first reason. Second reason, variation in the shape and size of body and your inter internal uh, composition. Radiation is scattered, okay? In this slice, as you see here, this scattered radiation, scattered radiation, will increase, uh, also will increase the patient dose, okay? And it is a complicated process to, uh, if we have multi-slice technique, so each slice will give you scattered radiation, which increase the patient dose, okay? So scatter problem has to be solved if you want to measure the, uh, uh, the dose of patients. Also, we cannot place a dosometer inside the patient uh, to make our measurements. Okay, to solve the issue of uh, 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 scatter, okay, so uh, if we want to solve the issue of scatter, we will use BMMA, BMMA uh, acrylic phantom. This phantom, we are using two phantoms, one for head 16 centimeter and another one 32 for uh, abdominal section, okay, and we are using uh, ionization chamber to measure the dose uh, in this phantom, okay, so we, we are using this phantom as a simulator for patients, okay, and we are using ionization chamber to measure the dose, to measure the dose of, uh, of x-ray or our CT, but uh, to solve the problem of scatter, we will we will use our phantom to uh, scan only one slice. Scan only one slice. Scanning only one slice give you give you a good approximation about the uh, about the scatter dose. After that, you can uh, you can you can get a good approximation to the dose within uh, to the scattered radiation from adjacent uh, multiple slices. So. Here, as we see here in this image, okay, this phantom, okay, is simulated to the patients, and we will uh, uh, we will measure the dose per one slice. We we have to integrate the dose, okay, uh, through this slice, okay, and dividing this dose by uh, the beam width. As you see here from this equation, this is the first term used for dose quantities or CT dose index. CT dose index 100, 100 here is related to that we are using an addition chamber 100 millimeters. 
in length. So we have to integrate the dose through this uh, through this ionization chamber from uh, minus 50 millimeter to plus 50 millimeter to integrate integrate this dose and dividing this for beam widths. Here N T N here represent the number of rows or number of detectors we are using, and T uh, represent the uh, detector width. So if I have uh, 16 or two uh, 16 row of detectors and each detector has uh, width one millimeter, so the beam collimation beam collimation here will be uh, 16 millimeters. Okay. So second problem here, the unequal dose distribution. As I told you before, that the dose distribution through the flies in X, Y, or Z direction is uh, uh, there is a great variation. So you have to measure the dose not only in 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 uh, in one side, but we are using here five uh, measurements, five measurement in the center of. Uh, of uh, the acrylic phantom and in the periphery of the acrylic phantom. So you can get uh, an average dose or which is called CTDI weighted, which is equal to one third CTDI in the center and plus two, uh, two third uh, CTDI in the periphery. Now you can get the average dose, okay, uh, through the phantom or through our slice. Okay, so now we can get the second term, which is CTDI weighted. So first term, CTDI, 100, second third, CTDI weighted, okay? So now, there is another factor we talk about uh, at uh, uh, previous lecture, we talk about the pitch, which means that table speed, which represents the table speed, all table distance traveled by rotation time. If the scan, if, if our scan, or we are, if we scan the patient with higher pitch, that mean, that means that uh, the concentration of radiation become less. And if we scan the patient with low pitch, that means the concentration of radiation become higher because increasing the uh, table speed, okay, reduce the, to the dose to patient, but uh, reduce the pitch, that means reduce the table speed, increase the dose to patient. So I have to calculate the dose, okay, and taking in mind concentration, the pitch. So I have to divide CTDI weighted divided by pitch to get CTDI volume, CTDI volume, okay? So here you will, you will find that there is inverse uh, proportionality between the dose and pitch, okay? Increasing pitch, reduce the dose, and uh, reduce pitch, increase the dose. This pitch is, is a parameter, uh, uh, you can see it and you can use it uh, in uh, your CT or uh, uh, during designing your CT protocol. Okay, so now, you will find that there is a direct relationship between CTDI volume and the exposure uh, time or uh, the rotation. That means if you increase the rotation time, if you increase the rotation time, that means you are increasing the patient exposure, so CTDI volume will be increased. You can see here, this is different vendors like Neurologica or Toshiba or Hitachi. Here, the, without using milliampere modulation, autom automatic exposure control. Automatic exposure control means that you are using uh, uh, dose modulation techniques. You remember that I told you before in the previous lecture that uh, if we scan patient uh, doing uh, CT chest abdomen pelvis, so there are different uh, organs with different contour, with different attenuation. So we have to use different uh, milliampere uh, and uh, milliampere for each, uh, uh, for each organ, like chest abdomen. So using uh, without using automatic exposure control, so uh, there is a direct relationship between CTDI volume, exposure uh, time, by rotation. But here, on using automatic exposure control, CTDI volume, okay, if you want to check the displayed CTDI volume, it becomes independent of exposure time. Why? Because when you change, when you change the exposure time, by rotation, okay, the and you also select automatic exposure control, okay, the machine itself will it change another parameter like pitch, like uh, uh, milliampere, okay, to give you to give you the same is the image quality you need, the image quality you need to make an optimization of the door. So it so take care of this point if you want to design a protocol for CT using automatic exposure control, okay, gives the machine in new soft. Toshiba, Philips, Siemens, okay, uh, the responsibility to do, uh, to change the parameter, okay, to give you the same, the image quality you need, 
okay? But without using automatic exposure control, okay? So there is a direct relationship. So you can uh, get uh, this, this relation will be applied for uh, CT brain, for uh, uh, all extremities, okay? Uh, so for organs where, where there is the no variation in patient contour or patient uh, attenuation. Also for CTDI tube current here, increasing tube current, increasing CTDI volume. Here you will find uh, inverse proportionality between CTDI volume and pitch. Okay, in Hitachi, Toshiba is the same idea with automatic exposure control. Also increasing KV will increasing CTDI volume, okay? So take, take care from this point using automatic exposure control. Okay, it's important for uh, patients, but uh, you have to check your displayed CTDI volume. So, okay, user should monitor CTDI volume values when changing the field of measurement, also changing the field, field size. It can so sometimes you increasing the field size. Okay, also increase uh, CTDI volume. Uh, sometimes I find some technicians uh, doing a CT for a child, for baby uh, with the same field of view uh, of adults. So that's increasing the patient dose also. Okay, so the use of automatic exposure control may decrease or increase the eye volume depending on the patient size for the area image and the image qual quality requested. Okay, so now we are going to uh, get the patient dose estimation, okay? So now we have uh, this term, CTDI volume. CTDI volume, now we are taking into consideration the beat factor and also the beam collimation, okay? So, but we are scanning the patient for CT chest, for CT abdomen, okay? We will take lens. So we have to put this lens in our equation, okay? So we have to multiply CTDI volume times lens to give you another term, which is called the LB, those lens product, which unit is milligrade dose centimeters. So this is another term. So now it's important to know that finally we get the patient dose, no. We, we have to get the effective dose of patient. Okay, so now from where can I get CTDI volume and DLB? Okay, this is our CT machine, Toshiba, okay? When you scan any patient, like this example for cardiac, okay, you have to make this box as a planning, you have to determine your start, determine your end, okay. After that, now we are taking, uh, we already took our scalp, our pilot, okay, or scanogram, and we want to check CTDI volume after adjusting KV, after adjusting all those parameters, I want to know the CTDI volume, Okay, and I want to know DLB, those lens products before scanning is a patient. Because if I get, uh, if I found that CTDI volume or DLB is higher, okay, so I have to make uh, some optimization or reduce uh, milliampere or using uh, those uh, milliampere modulation or increasing beach factor or reducing the rotation time, okay, to, uh, uh, to uh, lower or to reduce DLB. Okay, so it's important to get this information before scanning the patient. Okay, so from where you will find here scan details and reconstruction details and those. Okay, here scan details. If you select scan details here, you will get all information regarding uh, scan acquisition parameters, KV, milliampere, beach factor, rotation time, and those modulation. If you select here for scan reconstruction construction details, you will get all information about the reconstruction algorithm you are using and also uh, slice thickness of, uh, uh, of, uh, of axial cuts we are using for reconstruction volume and also filtering technique, everything related to reconstruction details. But for those, if we select those, you will find here, here, this term, which is CTDI volume. So after, after planning the patient, after you select the number of helicals you need or number of scans you need, you can get easily for each helical or for each scan, the CTDI volume expected, okay, and DLB, okay? It's, it's, it's automatically calculated. It's automatically calculated before the machine come into our side, okay? All this data uh, uh, calculated and uh, the machine already calibrated for different different phantom size. You'll find here phantom size or phantom type, you will find 32 centimeters or 16 centimeters. If you try to change this phantom from 32 to 16, you will get another CTDI volume, okay? So you have to make sure that on using 
CT chest or abdomen or any uh, uh, any large body region, you have to select body phantom here. You have to make sure that body phantom here is 32 centimeter. So to be sure that your CTDI volume is correct, but on using for CT brain, for small organs, also for child, okay, you, you have to check the body phantom here is 16 centimeter. You will get uh, a big difference in the values of CTDI volume. Okay, so also post the scan after scanning the patient, you will get this summary page. Okay, all details come in uh, uh, study date, everything about the patient. And also here you will get DLB and CTDI volume. DLB, those lens product here is 1001.5. So you can use DLB. Okay, if you come into your center, pregnant patient, and if you want to uh, expect the, the patient dose or the pregnant dose, okay, you can use DLB. Okay, let us summarize what, what, what we call about. Now we are uh, calculating CTDI, okay? So we want to adjust for a variation of those, okay? You remember the phantom, we measure in the center and the periphery. So we have to get CTDI weighted, which is, Average dose. After that, we want to adjust for which the, the stable movement, fast or slow. So we have to get CTDI volume. Okay. So after that, we want to adjust for a distance of a scan. It's long or a uh, long scan or short scan. So we will get another term which is DLB. Final term which is important for all of us is the effective dose. Okay. So now we have to convert from DLB to the effective dose. How can I get it? Okay, so now we have to um, uh, uh, multiply our DLB times conversion factor. So from where can I get this conversion factor? Okay, it's so conversion factor which express the, the sensitivity of different tissues. Okay, so we can use ICRP 60 or ICRP uh, 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 103 recommendations for conversion factor to convert from DLB to, uh, 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 to effective dose, which is calculated according to the uh, body region and different voltage and age of patient also. So you will get a lot of, uh, you will get Tables, these tables, these tables, okay? You will get here ICRB publication 60 and ICRB publication 103, okay? Here, the variation in different volts, 80, 100, 120, 140, 40. So you can, you have to select which conversion factor I use, okay? So for head, you will, you will find different uh, uh, conversion factor or conversion factor which is related to the tube voltage for neck, for chest, and abdomen, and belly. This for adult patients, here for 10 years old, here for five years, one year, and a newborn. So you have to select the proper KV and the proper age, okay, to select the conversion uh, coefficient, we can use it, okay, according to ICRB publication or ICRB uh, 60 or 103 to use it. So now, if I have a summary page like that, like this, okay, and I have a, a DLB of the patients, okay, which is 555, okay, 0.7. And if you want to calculate the effective dose, okay, let us uh, go through this example, okay, to know. If I want to calculate if this dose or DLB, it's coming for a different organ, but the same value, same value, same DLB, but with different organ and different uh, uh, patient age and different patient age, okay? Let us calculate together here for effective dose for head, for adult, okay? So we will use this conversion factor, okay, from our tables here, okay? You will get this value of effective dose, which is 0.8 millisievert, okay? Sometimes you are uh, uh, scanning the patient for CT, adult for CT brain, using the same protocol for adult for newborn or for baby, okay? So I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, imagine with me the uh, great difference in the effective dose, okay? Using the same dose parameters, the same if DLB, you will get it, and after that, you use another conversion factor, which is related to the newborn, you will get 4.2 millisievert. You can imagine the difference in the effective dose. Okay, also for chest, for another body region, okay, for adult, you will use another conversion factor, he is 7.5. Sometimes using the same dose parameter for newborn, also you will find a lot of technician doing this. 
unfortunately, uh, uh, I'm sorry for saying that, but it, it, it's actually happening in our radiology center. So we have to follow as a medical physicist, you have to uh, check with a uh, technician, which protocol you have to make your protocol for different age, for different patient size. It's very important to check and to make this protocol and you have to make sure and confirm that your technician is following your protocol, not uh, using uh, one protocol for every patient. Also for chest newborn, you get the big difference is 7.5 and here 36.1, okay? And here for abdomen also, you will get 8.6, but here for abdomen newborn, 47. So you have to make sure that we are using the protocol, which is dedicated for newborn or adult, okay? But as I told you before in the previous lecture, for adult, you have to use higher TV or uh, higher uh, parameters, but for newborn, you have to reduce TV, you have to reduce milliampere, you have to uh, make the table speed very fast, the detector configuration will be different. All these parameters should be uh, uh, should be designed by a medical physicist, okay, to uh, make sure that the dose is less. Okay, so if I want to make CT radiation geometry for quality assurance, for uh, 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 for acceptance test or commissioning or annual QC, it's easy to go through this report, okay, IA Human Health Series. Uh, 19 quality assurance program for computer tomography diagnostic and uh, for also for CT simulator, okay? And you will find uh, CT videos, okay, for quality control and CT radiation dosimetry, uh, okay, on IEA Human uh, Health uh, Canvas, uh, uh, IEA Human Health Canvas website, okay? I get this video from there, okay? It's about three minutes, okay? Okay, it's explaining in details, okay, uh, 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 how to do CT uh, dosimetry or CT radiation dosimetry using our phantom here. Okay, you will get this big one for body phantom and this is our ionization chamber, okay. This is all materials we need. Okay, the procedure, you can follow the procedure easily, okay, uh, uh, and uh, to measure CTDI volume, okay? And to, to make verification between the measured CTDI volume, okay? And the displayed CTDI volume, you have to verify that uh, your measurements, okay? Actual measurement, okay? Uh, 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 is not, uh, no big difference, uh, not greater than 20% from the displayed CTDI volume, okay? After positioning the phantom, as you said, uh, you have to make sure, this is important information, that all plugs here, BMA plugs, if you want to measure in the center, you have to make sure that all holes here is uh, plugged with uh, this BMA plugs, okay? If you want to measure in the periphery, you have to make sure that the rest of uh, uh, spheres or holes also plugged with these plugs, okay? Okay, and also center line, you have to make sure that your alignment of the phantom using the leather, okay? And uh, you have to make sure that your phantom is the center of the field of view. And you can select the proper scan protocol we are using for, uh, for example, if you are using for a protocol normally used for CT abdomen, uh, you, so you have to select the same protocol or you are using the CT protocol for head. So you have to, uh, to, to select the same protocol. This for head phantom, 16 centimeters. So you have to select the same parameters, okay? Uh, same parameter you are using in, during the helical scan for CT brain. And for uh, abdomen, you have have to select the same protocol, okay? Okay, here is repeating the measurements for left hole, for right hole, for lower hole, okay? Now we are using the body phantom. We did our measurements for 16 centimeter. Here we are using the uh, body phantom, okay? And also we can place the ionization chamber center of hole and repeat. Only uh, we are using uh, the center, uh, center hole also only, but we are using these peripheral holes for measurement.
OK, same. OK, here you can use this equation to get CTDI volume. OK, this one, one third CTDI, uh, which is those in the center and those in the periphery. OK, this is the CTDI weighted. I talked with you about it before and divide by pitch to give you CTDI volume. And after that, we multiply CTDI volume by length of scan to get the DLB. OK, after that, you can check the display CTDI volume and DLB, the measured and displayed. OK. Here you will get the difference is uh, for CTDI volume, okay, plus or minus 20%. Okay, this video is available. You can you, you can get it easily in uh, IAA Health Canvas, okay. And also I'll share with you this presentation. I write it here in details. You can uh, you can uh, use these details or using this report uh, this report for IAA Human Health to uh, go through it and to use the same procedure also uh, described here in details and you can use it. Okay, so now CTDI volume provides information about the amount of radiation used to perform the study. CTDI volume is used for index to track across patients and the protocol for quality assurance purpose. CTDI volume can be used as a metric to compare protocols. As I said to you before, that we can compare different protocols for uh, those optimization techniques, okay? And to check the image quality after that. But here, if I have two patients, okay, and this patient is 10 patient, okay? And this patient is obese, obese patient. Actually, I give the same dose parameter, okay? 120 kV at 200 milliampere. And also for this patient, 120 kV and 200 milliampere. I'll get the display CTDI volume is the same, okay? Because I am using the same parameter. I'm using uh, the same phantom 32 centimeter, okay? So CTDI volume will be displayed as 20 milligram, but actually the dose for 10 patient is higher than the dose for obese patient, okay? Because higher mass, so you will get less dose. Lower mass, you will get higher dose, okay? So actually, so now CTDI volume is not, is not patient size dependent. So with different patient size, you can get, you cannot get accurate patient dose or I can get accurate estimate for patient dose. So let us think what solution for this problem. Okay, so for search group, okay, contribute together to make Monte Carlo simulation and uh, to work for uh, different uh, phantom size, okay, and uh, to get uh, a, a conversion factor, okay, for uh, dependent on the patient, uh, dependent on the patient size, using a CTDI volume to give us uh, the they give us average dose of patient, which is called size specific dose estimate. Now, to be clear for everyone, I'm sorry, I'll try to put this here. Okay, here I'm using here or three phantoms. This one is 10 centimeters. And this one 16 centimeters, and this one 32 centimeters. Okay. And if you measure using our previous technique, okay, the measure as the dose here in this phantom and here. Okay. And using the same parameter, using the same parameter, what you expect? I'll expect that the measure dose or measure CTDI volume in this small phantom, 10 centimeter phantom, will be higher than this phantom and this one because small size. So give you higher dose, okay? So now, this is the measured, our measured value. Here you will get 47 milligray, okay? If we can compare this value with the display CTDI volume on using 16 slides, okay? 16 centimeter for uh, 16 centimeter phantom here, this is displayed, which is the machine, machine give, it, give it to us. It will be 37, 37, okay? So, there is difference between the measured value, we measure it, which is real, and the displayed value. Okay, also for this one, 16 centimeter, okay, you will get here for uh, uh, displayed value, here 37, 37, the same, yes, because our measurements, okay, 
for 16 centimeter and we are using here the displayed ctdi volume calculated from the same phantom okay but if we change the phantom to be 32 centimeter here the dose will be less 18 centimeter 18 uh, milligrams that means that if we select different body phantom or different phantom or using uh, 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 CT uh, protocol for abdomen to make CT for head, okay? CT protocol for abdomen, you will find that the selected phantom for this protocol, it, uh, it will be 32 centimeters. But now you are doing it to, to, to do uh, CT scan for brain. So you have to select another phantom, okay? But you don't care about it. And you proceed your procedure and you proceed your scan. So the display CTDI volume, which is 18 milligram, okay, it's underestimated. It's underestimated, okay? So the real or the patient dose here is underestimated using a higher, higher phantom or higher uh, width of phantom, okay, to be 32 centimeters, okay? Here, using uh, 32 centimeters, CTDI volume become 18. This is measured, but for using uh, different, uh, different phantom 16 centimeters, the display CTI volume will become overestimated, overestimated, become 32 seven centimeters. So now the display CTI volume is not uh, patient size dependent. So you have to take care of this point, okay? So that's the reason why we are saying that CTI volume is not patient dose, but it's indicator indicator for the output or the patient dose is high or less, okay? So now, display CDI volume is independent of the patient size. Display CDI volume assume either 16 or 32 centimeter phantom. 16 centimeter phantom, if I use 16 it is, uh, centimeter phantom, CDI, adult dose, adult dose which needs 32 centimeter, okay? Over, will be overestimated while pediatric dose will be underestimated. Okay, for 32 centimeter CTDI font, uh, phantom, other and pediatric dose will be underestimated. Okay, so you have to take care of this point. That's the reason why we are using here for, we are following SSDE size specific dose estimate, double ABM report number 204. For research group or for research independent research group using a Monte Carlo simulation and physical anthropomorphic phantoms, okay, and our cylindrical BMMA phantoms, okay, to get a, a conversion factor which depends on the, the patient size, okay, and use the CTDI value, okay, and using this conversion factor to get size specific dose estimate which express the average dose of patients. So now, to uh, understand the principle of this, okay? Here for, uh, this is our patients, okay? We will simulate this patient like circle. So if we get the uh, anterior posterior diameter, okay, this diameter and lateral diameter, okay? After that, we can get what's called effective diameter. Here from this equation, okay? You will get the effective diameter square root of AB dimension times lateral dimension. And after that, double ABM report number 20, uh, 204, tabulated all results, okay? And they get conver different conversion factors with different uh, body dimensions, the lateral dimension, AB dimension, okay? And submission and effective diameter, okay? This conversion factor, we can use it to get the size specific dose estimate from CTDI volume. Give you an example to understand with me. If we have CTD abdomen slice, okay, and AB dimension here is 99 millimeter, which is 9.9 .9 centimeter, and for lateral dimension is 123.2, which is 12.3 uh, centimeter. So summation of all this will be 22.2 uh, 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 centimeters. So from this table 1A, okay, which is uh, uh, this table, which give us conversion factor depends on the lateral plus uh, AB dimensions, okay? So we have to go through the value of uh, a lateral uh, submission of AB plus lateral, which is 22. So you can get the conversion factor, which is related to this diameters or related to this dimension. So after that, we can 
use this factor, okay, and uh, multiply CTDI volume times the conversion factor to give us size specific dose estimate for this patient. So now, after scanning the patient, okay, you have to select the uh, greater dimension slice, and you have to measure the AB and lateral dimension for this slide, and after that, go through double ABM report number 204 and to get the conversion factor, okay, which is related to the dimension you measure and get your CTDI volume from your summary page and multiply the conversion factor times CTDI volume to give you size specific dose estimate. But now I have a problem. Now I have to wait until the scan process ends. I can't get this image before scan. So CTDI volume method give you the displayed CTDI volume before scanning the patient. But for SSDE, you can't get it before the scan. Okay, so there is another solution for this problem. Make, they are also, make conversion factor for lateral dimensions for our scout. So you can get the size specific dose estimate before the scan, but using the scout, you can get the lateral dimension here, okay? And after that, you have to go through the table 2B, okay? And you have to get the value of conversion factor, which is 1.08, and substitute in this equation again to get the size specific dose estimate. But you have to know something. If you center the patient is near to the X-ray tube, so you will get, so the scanogram or the scout will be magnified. So there is error. Yes, that's the reason why there is a limitation for size specific dose estimate. Like CTDI volume method has also limitation for this. So this limitation, okay, we will, I'll show it for you now. This is all tables. You can get it easily from double ABM. You will find table for 16 centimeter phantom and other 32 centimeter phantom. Okay, here. Now, this patient, okay, same patient. This patient with can this patient using 120 kV and 100 milliampere second. But this patient is obese patient. So we will get 120 kV at 200 milliampere second. So we are hiring or increasing milliampere because the patient is obese. Okay, so CTDI volume will be different, okay? Because you are using different milliampere. So increasing milliampere will cause increasing in CTDI volume, as I told you before. So, okay, so, but now size specific dose estimate, actually, if I get the diameter of patients and make the scan lens and get the effective diameter or the dimension of the slice and go, go through double ABM, okay, you will get that, you will get that size specific dose estimate is the same for patient. So now size specific dose estimate become more accurate in these cases, in these cases, okay, because CTDI volume give you 10 milligram, okay, and here give you 20 milligram and you are reducing the dose, okay. But here, actually, they have the same size specific dose estimate. So they have equivalent, equivalent size specific dose estimate. So now, the limitation of size specific dose estimate, all the data are collected from scan range, 15 centimeter to 30 centimeter, but CT dose is length and patient height dependent. Yes, because all measurements using range from for uh, data collected for double ABM report number uh, two four for size specific dose estimate using only scale range from 15 centimeter to 30 centimeter, but CT dose depends on the length of scan or, or height of scan. So it's important to be uh, to take it into consideration, okay? All data are collected from abdominal model or homogeneous model, which cause a constant result for thoracic and abdomen and the pelvis. It is unlogic to, uh, to estimate the same dose for uh, chest 
like abdomen, like pelvis, different attenuation. So there is different uh, absorption of the X-ray. So there is variation in attenuation that cause variation in the absorbed dose also. So that uh, the, uh, this also has to be taken into consideration. This table then didn't mention the dose from CT radiograph also for CT scout. Uh, uh, otherwise, CTI volume, you can calculate the DLB for total scan, for, for scout, for each helical, for axial scan, all, all scans you get it, you can get the total DLB for all scan, but here you can't get it. It's not mentioned. Errors may occur with patient dimension. As I told you before, if you centering the patients near to the X-ray tube, so you can make the, uh, the, the, make the scout itself is magnified. So if you, uh, if you want to measure the dimension, it will be uh, not accurate. All values in the table are calculated at the center of scanned volume, yes which will be overestimated than the real value. Yes, because we are only using center of uh, scanned volume, large size slice, okay, to get our dose. But really, okay, the dose is, is, not, uh, is not the same for all slices of patient, okay? So the dose here will be overestimated, okay? But we have to get the average dose for whole patients, okay? Doesn't correct for head scan. Head scan not, in, not involved in this report. Doesn't correct for small variation for pre and post scan for contrast estimated uh, after the eye. Yes, that's that what I told you that we, we need to be a uh, size specific dose estimate should be estimated after the scan. Okay, also give us some limitation if the size specific dose estimate is greater than five milligray, should be written digits only seven milligray or 23, for example. But if size specific uh, dose estimate less than five milligray, only one decimal point. You you can put it, okay? So all these limitations, okay, uh, uh, make uh, us uh, to be sure that we are only estimate the dose, estimate the dose, not give us accurate calculation for patient dose for CT, okay? So how can I get all this information easily from our software? Okay, Japan Atomic Energy Agency uh, uh, developed uh, weather array for improvement of management of exposure doses due to CT examination under joint research, okay, with OIT University of Nursing and Health Sciences. You can use this lamp easily. Okay, this lamp is easy to uh, go through it, log in and make registration. And after that, after register, okay, you can calculate the X-ray CT exposure. You find this image so easy, okay? You have to select the manufacturer you need, Okay, you can use Siemens, Canon, Toshiba, whatever you want. Okay, for example, I can use it for Toshiba. Okay, so I have to select the scan model, uh, one version, Brian, which one you need. Okay, we can use Aqualium, for example. Okay, and I can use here for uh, body, for body, body or fertile. Okay, use body. Okay, for two potential will be here 80 or 100, 120 kV. So I can select the rotation time I need. Okay, one second, beach factor also you can bolt it here. Okay, and beam width also you can select which detector configuration you need 16 uh, times one uh, or which covering 16 millimeter, for example, and you can select the female or male. After that, you can uh, select the age or uh, the phantom with select standard, okay? And you will select the scan type abdomen, okay? Okay, our abdomen, this one, and you can use this easily to increase the length of scan, okay? And also here you can select the CTI phantom size 32, I'll select 32 because I'm using here CT body phantom, okay? So uh, if I want to calculate a size specific dose estimate, you have to make it on and you have to get, uh, uh, you have to put here, uh, for example, the uh, AB dimension and lateral dimension, okay? So you can change a lot of parameters here, different and comparing between different vendors, okay? After that, easy to calculate the dose, Okay, here we'll give you information about the effective dose, which is related with using conversion factor, which is 103 uh, ICRP 103 one, uh, one, or ICRP is uh, 460. So you will get the effective dose, which is related to each uh, uh, publications. And also you'll get DLB and you will get CTDI volume and size specific dose estimate also after that you can 
print it or convert it to uh, and save it to uh, save it to your uh, computer. Okay. So, okay, so uh, also uh, it, it has to be done for any report. So, so uh, it has to be mentioned with those reporting for a geologist. You have to mention this statement, okay, using CDI value, value report on the scanner for which phantom we are used and the correction factor obtained from WABM report uh, correction factor for this patient was based on patients uh, ab or lateral or whatever you use this method is thought to be reduced those estimates with accuracy to within 20 percent for this patient size corrected estimate for this scan is okay how much is those for milligram so now uh, i have enough time or janet sir you have 11 minutes left Okay, I, I, I'll continue in brief for you uh, for image reconstruction role in those reduction and improve image quality. So uh, I'll talk about image reconstruction not in uh, uh, a lot of mathematics. You will get you will get a lot of mathematics talking about image reconstruction algorithm for filter back projection for iterative reconstruction algorithm. Or uh, but uh, really, I want to take uh, to talk about image reconstruction algorithm from uh, those uh, patient those point of view and the image quality point of view. Okay, so we have four generation, four generation for image reconstruction algorithm. First one using filter back projection, second one image with filtering, denoising, and also using filter back projection. Third generation using basic iterative reconstruction and, uh, technique. Fourth generation, which is commonly used now for all CT machines, and you can get it in any CT machine nowadays, uh, and you can change and use it to reduce the patient dose and improve the image quality, okay? Uh, we will see now a, a lot of example regarding this issue, okay? For filter back projection is very fast, but for iterative technique, take more time because it needs a lot of mathematical, uh, a lot of mathematical uh, operations. So we will get the difference between the different generations, okay? Like removing uh, of some image noise, the generation two, or J starting using iterative reconstruction algorithm, artifacts become less and noise removed. But uh, uh, for generation four, okay, advanced iterative reconstruction algorithm, okay, you, now you are uh, increasing uh, the special resolution, reduce uh, artifacts uh, for high degree and remove the noise, okay? So this is a, a, a brand name for iterative reconstruction algorithm used for different vendors. You will find the team is IRIS, iterative reconstruction in space, fire, fine gram, affirmed iterative reconstruction for Shiba, VR3D, and GE, Azure, or uh, MBIR, model-based iterative reconstruction, and for Philips IDOS. You can go through H1 and you can use it in your city uh, those protocol and you do uh, you can uh, reduce the position parameter to uh, uh, using iterative reconstruction algorithm to enhance the image quality and reduce the patient dose okay so let us uh, get some comparison uh, for from some studies you will find a lot of studies talking about different uh, using filter back projection and uh, and and uh, iterative reconstruction and, uh, techniques here, as we see here, that uh, there is for this patient for using generation one, okay, for CT chest lung, you will get this, uh, this, uh, this patient scanned with 100 kV and 188 milliampere second is the high dose, the dose received for this patient is around 5.5 millisievert, but using ultra low dose technique using 100 kV and 14 milliampere second, so those reduced to 0.4 millisievert. But here for uh, filter back projection, uh, filter back projection technique, standard technique, enable to remove the noise. Here, as you see here, the noise appear. Okay, these dots. Why dots, as you see here, that mean that uh, number of number of photon transmitted, which is received from uh, received uh, by the detector, is not enough. Okay, are not enough to give you a good image or a good information about uh, the image or the, about the tissue. So that's uh, which is represented by uh, these white dots. Okay, so these white dots here is removed in this uh, using iterative reconstruction algorithm using the same dose parameter. So now you will get 93. Those reduction 
okay? And also the art as the noise become less using the fourth generation, which is called IDOS for Philips machine, okay? So now fourth generation iterative reconstruction algorithm, such as IDOS, prevent artifacts and limit quantum quantum uh, molten noise, okay? So prevent artifacts and reduce the noise or limit the noise, okay? Here, for uh, filter pack projection uh, as a standard method uh, used for a long time, uh, used for reconstruction of CT, image has a lot of uh, disadvantages like strike artifacts with low dose, reconstruction bias, you will find that uh, shift in CT numbers uh, to higher values, you'll find poor choice, also if number of projections they are not enough, okay, so it is. it will be poor choice to use filter pack projection to uh, give you a gold image, okay, sometimes using filter, filtering uh, like uh, sharpening uh, filter for filter back projection if you if you want to get bone image for example you are amplifying the noise to an acceptable level causing uh, strikes in the reconstructed image okay so now for second generation okay using uh, iterative noise filtering techniques okay to uh, uh, reduce the dose but moderately and remove some of increase some of noise so now Okay, for this example, as a comparison, this is our uh, neck region, okay? And you will get here for first generation, this is an obese patient. You will find here a uh, noisy image and strikes. This strikes is like uh, uh, strikes, uh, artifacts, blackening here, you will get it. But using a smooth filtering with uh, filter back projection, you will reduce the noise, okay? But still the same strikes appear, okay? And using, Okay, more smooth or denoising with the smooth kernel. Okay, reduce the, the noise, but also the still strikes artifacts still appear, which is covering the anato uh, anatomy of the patients or the actual anatomy of the patients. Okay, but uh, uh, in comparison with the fourth generation here, you can get less noise and removing the removing artifacts and the anatomy here appear and you can diagnose the patient accurately. So now, uh, using the second generation, reduce the noise, okay, and reduce the dose, the dose a little bit, but still strike artifacts appear, which is uh, uh, covering the anatomy of patients so you can diagnose it properly. Okay, for third generation, this is a start of iterative reconstruction algorithm, but uh, has uh, some drawbacks or uh, a disadvantage like loss in special resolution, okay, particularly at the location of the steep Hounsfeld unique gradient, like region of uh, interface between bone and soft, soft tissue or air or soft tissue interface, you will find that loss in special resolution in this point, also not correcting for uh, uh, or prevent uh, bias artifact. By the artifact, as I told you before, that is, here, this different uh, image for CT Phantom. And here using, you will find here, you can uh, look at the center of the image that's here, higher Hounsfield unit. This is a shift. It is not a uh, real numbers, but uh, using, uh, this is called the image bias. This is a shift in a CT number towards the center of the Phantom, but using fourth generation prevent the, uh, this bias, okay? Okay, something is called a uh, shift in noise power spectrum. If you want to go through the mathematics of noise power spectrum, you will understand that uh, uh, after denoising or after smoothing or after removing noise or after removing strike artifact, uh, uh, can you ask yourself, is this image is still the true image or there is difference in the image texture? Okay, this is a true image or there is difference. Okay, so uh, uh, you will uh, get with three third generation shift in uh, the image texture will not be real. Okay, so it will give you sometimes will give you false information about the diagnosis of patient. Okay, but you think. That, uh, I sorry to interrupt, we have uh, three minutes left. Okay, I, 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 I approximately finished so. Okay, so you will you will find a lot of papers talking about uh, uh, talking about iterative reconstruction algorithm to get the same like I dose here 120 kV with less dose 
you can get the difference here with image with 300 million per second here with 57 million per second degree difference in the doors and also as uh, uh, it's a diagnostic and the competitive image quality you can use it so uh, i advise uh, all medical physicists to go through this uh, iterative reconstruction algorithm to get the image quality to be better and reduce the patient dose okay and try to design your protocol uh, and to ask yourself what i need exactly from the image uh, higher special resolution or contrast resolution or uh, what's exactly clinical need of doctors okay you have to contribute to with your with your uh, radiologist and technician to uh, to design the protocol for uh, reducing the patient dose and to get a proper image quality also using uh, uh, also using uh, fourth generation uh, improves the contrast to noise ratio of the image here and reduce the noise and increase the contrast okay and also increase the special resolution which is important for coronary arteries to detect any plaques in the coronary uh, arteries okay so uh, you can go through the presentation and if you need to ask any question, I'm welcoming everyone to, uh, to ask me anytime, okay? Uh, I'm so happy to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your very knowledgeable presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm ready for your question. I'll take some question from our participants. Okay, I'll try to, to stop. Uh, yes, pause, share screen. Yes, First one, uh, despite having so much dedicated CT dosimetry methods, why it is so challenging to conduct precise and accurate CT dosimetry? No, what no, I, could I, be the causes behind this? Sorry, I'll try to, to catch you, but... Uh, okay, uh, can, can you repeat the question, please? Because I didn't hear you well. Yes, sir. Despite having so much dedicated CT dosimetry methods, why it is so challenging to conduct precise and accurate CT dosimetry? And what could be the causes behind this? Uh, what's the recommended chamber size or? or... Can, can you send it? Can you send it? I can't hear you well. Sir, uh, can I say? Sir, yes, yes. Uh, despite having so much dedicated CT dosimetry methods, still, why it is so challenging to conduct precise and accurate CT dosimetry, and what could be the causes behind this? Ah, uh, okay. If I get your question, be, be, uh, we we have different we have different uh, we have different uh, CT dosimetry method. Okay, uh, to estimate the dose, but we have many limitations. Okay, regarding this. And uh, from my experience or from my reading, in we, we have a different uh, publications regarding Monte Carlo simulations uh, to calculate the organ uh, doses. Uh, but it, I think uh, for uh, accurate estimation of uh, of of uh, of, uh, of the patient dose for each organ, I think it's a great challenge. Okay, and I need a lot of. I think we we need a lot of uh, research in this area. Okay, uh, to uh, be accurately uh, determine the patient dose. Yes, okay, I, you get it or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir the next question is, uh, you said the dose for thin person goes higher than the obese person for the same value of CTDI, KV or milliamperes. Then what can be done to reduce the dose to thin patient for same values of above parameters okay if you want to reduce the dose for thin patient yes yes sir yes if you want to reduce for example if if coming to your center a patient to do a, 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 a ct chest okay and this patient is thin patient you have to ask yourself first question uh, the uh, the organ I'm going to scan it is uh, chest or uh, it's uh, this organ has a variation in the contour of patient or not? Okay, that's first. If there is a contouring or different or variations in the attenuation of patient, so you can use automatic or uh, milliampere modulation techniques. Okay, that reduce the dose and also and also uh, uh, maintain the image quality. That's number one. Number two, for any thin patient, 
or moderate size patient, no need to use 120 kV. Only 80 or 100 kV is more enough to use it, to use it, okay? So for, number one, using dose modulation technique as much as you can, using low kV, okay, 800, uh, uh, sorry, 80 or 100 maximum, okay, for thin patient. Also for rotation time, rotation time, okay, sometimes you are using one second. One second is too much. Okay, you can use 0.6 or 0.7. Okay, sometimes with 30, uh, 320 uh, row of detectors, you can use uh, less than 0.5 seconds in your uh, in your scan. So reducing the rotation time will expose the patient to less radiation and also will not give you a, a great effect or a great uh, noise in the image because the patient size is thin. Okay. And, and, and so you can use uh, uh, 0.6 or 0.7, okay, as a maximum rotation time. Also for beach factor, which is important parameter, you can use it. Beach factor, okay, beach factor. Uh, as I told you last time that beach factor, if, uh, if I want to scan patient for CT, neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, okay, so these organs, okay, uh, don't need uh, uh, to make it uh, for higher resolution, okay? So you can use, you can use a uh, beach factor, okay, greater than one, greater than one. To be 1.5, 1.25 is enough. And you will reduce exposure time and will it will, will, will speed up the scan, uh, the scan procedure and also will reduce the patient load and no great effect, especially for thin patient, especially for moderate size patient, okay? So now I talk about uh, uh, beach factor, rotation time, KV, milliampere modulation. Important factor, which is called uh, detector configuration. Detector configuration, sometimes I find some people using, six, uh, for example, if I have 16 row of detector using uh, slice thickness uh, or uh, thickness, uh, which is 0.5. That means, okay, bare acquisition, you are covering only eight millimeter. You take more time. You are exposing the vision to higher dose. Only you with 0.5, 16 times 0.5 as a detector configuration only. In case of a, a, a high resolution uh, scan like vitrospone, like wrist, like uh, uh, ankle, like elbow, this uh, organ need high resolution and you can detect a pathology uh, size reach to 0.5 millimeter. But for large scan area like chest, like abdomen, like pelvis, okay, it's enough to use one millimeter. So now you can cover a uh, uh, 16 millimeter bare acquisition. So you can reduce the time to half and reduce the dose to half and the image quality will not get a great difference. Okay, I answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Um, next one from Wilson. How to calculate conversion factors for research purpose? Uh, you want to calculate conversion factor for research purpose. Okay. Uh, 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 all conversion factor come from Monte Carlo simulations. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I have no great experience for Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, but uh, from my reading, uh, I think the only way you can drive uh, conversion factors using, uh, 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 you have to simulate using Monte Carlo simulation and also you can use uh, different phantom size or anthropomorphic phantom and you can correlate your results, okay, together. And after that, you can uh, both different situations for different body size okay for different diameters and uh, you will uh, measure uh, Monte Carlo simulation enable you to give you uh, as, as accurate estimation for uh, our accurate estimated factors okay to be used to uh, get uh, uh, the action as uh, the dose of patients okay or uh, to detect the variation in patient size the variation in patient size Okay, so you can use uh, Monte Carlo simulation for this purpose. Okay, sir. The next question is for CTDI measurement using Phantom, do we have to use axial single slice always? Sorry, sorry. 
for CTDI measurement, do we have to use axial single slice always? Uh, for CT dosimetry or yes. for uh, CTDI measurement? Uh, yeah, for, for the zoometry, for the zoometry, you can use helical or you can use axial, okay? But uh, I, I think you can uh, do for axial and the helical, both of them, and you compare and you verify the dose. But from my experience, you will get a higher difference in the measured value and displayed value in case of a helical scan because helical scan causing something is called over beaming, okay? Because you get uh, multi slice and uh, all multi all slices will, uh, will over, over beam together, okay? And increasing the amplitude of the dose. So the measured value I think will be a, a, a higher difference than the, uh, those measures, okay? So you can use it for helical and use the same protocol and to compare your measured value with the displayed value, and you can use it for uh, axial scan and also to check it. Okay, sir. What is the recommended chamber size for CTDI dosimetry? And One what more. is the ideal collimation width for CTDI measurement? Okay, uh, 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 there is, uh, uh, the recommended chamber size is 100 millimeters, okay, for length, and uh, 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 this for uh, this for ionization chamber, if I understand your question very well. Okay, so uh, either you, you, will, you will do CTDI measurements for or beam collimation. My friend, this is important question. You have to do uh, uh, CT dose measurements for different collimation you are used, you are used in your department for different detector configuration. You are used sometimes using 16.5 or 16.125, and you can use different detector configuration and detect the CTDI zoometry and also for different beam collimation. Okay. Yes, sir. So the next question also from him uh, What will be the difference in CTDI value for one centimeter collimation wide? and 0.5 centimeter collimation wide in the Z axis for the same parameters. Uh, uh, CTDI volume or CTDI? If he is talking about the CTDI volume, okay, uh, 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 CTDI volume, okay, uh, for, uh, it, is, it is not dependent on the lens. If he's talking about the scan lens or talking about uh, collimation width itself. If he's talking about the scan lens, so DLB will be different, okay? Because uh, CTDI volume depends only the uh, the beach factor, okay? And uh, uh, and also taking on uh, consideration the beam width, the beam width, because CTDI volume is coming from CTDI weighted uh, divided by the beam width, okay? So if we increase the beam width, CTDI volume will be become CTDI weighted will become less, so CTDI volume will become less if you increase the beam the beam width, okay? So in increasing the beam width, okay, CTDI volume, increasing the beam width, CTDI volume will become less, but if you increase the scan length, scan length, okay, there is no difference because uh, the scan length only uh, related to the dose length product. Okay, sir. Uh, what is Corex and abdomen, it can't in one go. What conversion factor we can use? No, sir, I, I get another question. If, someone knows if head, neck, thorax, and abdomen is scanned in one go, what conversion factor can we use? Sorry, again, again, again. Sir, uh, what conversion factor? factor we can use if head, neck, thorax, and abdomen is scanned uh, in uh, one it's a, good, uh, it's, a guess, it's a good question, but actually you can do head, neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, the same scan. Okay. If I, if I can do head, neck, chest, uh, chest, abdomen, pelvis, okay, all of them the same scan, so you have to make sure, okay, that your display CTDI volume will not be accurate because for the same scan, you are using only 32 centimeter or 16 centimeter phantom. Okay, sir. Uh, 
Okay, so your dose calculation will depend on it. So the situation, if I scan Bayesian for CT brain, I'll get for this helical, the DLB, okay, which is related to the CT brain. So from this, I can get the effective dose using the conversion factor for head. For neck, also we can get it, okay? Because for CT brain, you are using a different parameter than CT neck or chest or abdomen pelvis. So I am not advising anyone to do CT brain, neck, chest, abdomen pelvis with the same parameters. You need different filter technique for brain than abdomen or chest. Chest need different, chest and the abdomen and the pelvis, you can, talk, you can do post kernel uh, filter, filter. But for brain, you have to get special filter. This for construction process. And also for TV, I have to use for CT brain 120 kg. Okay, for CT brain, especially if the vision is other. But for chest abdomen pelvis, it is not necessary to use 120 kV. So for chest abdomen pelvis, okay, if I scan patient for chest abdomen pelvis, I have to make average conversion factor between chest and abdomen and the pelvis and use the total DLB, which is coming out from the summary, summary page, okay, to get approximate effective dose. These four chest abdomen pelvis. So uh, uh, you, you get your answer now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and I have another one. If uh. someone not using AEC, what will the what will be the effect on patient dose if they only AP scout of patient? Okay, for uh, not using AEC, the dose will be higher. Okay, because uh, you are using uh, fixed milliampere. Okay, also the image quality will not be the same. Noise level. I want you to imagine with me if you scan the patient for chest, abdomen, pelvis, okay? So for chest region, we need less milliampere or low milliampere. For abdomen, we increase milliampere a little bit. For pelvis, okay, you, you have to increase milliampere more than abdomen and chest, okay? So if we are using fixed milliampere, which milliampere will use? for pelvis or chest or abdomen. If we use milliampere, which is dedicated for chest, so now the noise will be higher on abdomen and pelvis. So the air quality will be not good, okay, for this. But the noise will be less, okay, I agree with you. But if I use the, the milliampere, which is suitable for pelvis, now you are overexposing over exposing the patient to higher dose. So a patient no need for it. So you have to use automatic exposure control, okay, to make the noise level in chest the same in abdomen, same in pelvis, and also reduce the patient dose, and also reduce the patient dose. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the last question we have for whole body angiogram, especially in endovascular surgeon request CT for whole body. Head from head to toe, can we comment on this conversion factor? From head to toe. Need, as I told you before, it is not possible to do scan for one time, okay? For for whole uh, whole body from head to two. To two. Uh, there is a difference in image quality. There is difference in CTDI volume calculated for brain you need to be accurate. So you have to do for cerebral angiography or carotid angiography, you are using different protocol. So you will get DLB specific for head or neck. So you can calculate the effective dose for this one. And after that, you can calculate for chest, abdomen, pelvis, okay, as a whole body. Okay, and yes, you sir. can get the conversion factor for chest abdomen pelvis regions, okay, and take an average for conversion factors and multiply it with the total DLB for whole body scan. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for inter yeah, for 
discussing these important topics as uh, city contribute much higher dose than the other modalities. I think the participants enjoy the session very much and they have learned a lot about city dosimetry and reconstruction al algorithm. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful support regarding the regarding the organizing this session. And I would like to request all the participants to join our next lecture today on MRI quality control and image quality management by Dr. Leo Holing Anthony. He's from the yeah. He is the director of Imaging Physics Residency Program, University of Texas, USA. And tomorrow Thank we you. have our moderator, Ms. Gunjan Sharma, from uh, Government Medical College, Amritsar, India. Thank you so much. Thank all you, the participants Thank you very much. for your active participation and interaction with our expert. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Goodbye.